In our previous lectures, we learned how to solve the recurrence relation of time and how to solve the recurrence relation of return value using substitution method. Now, in this lecture, we will learn how to solve recurrence relation of multiplications using substitution method. So, let's get started with this lecture and let's see the topics. The first topic is writing the recurrence relation of multiplications. We will learn how to write the recurrence relation of multiplications first and then we will proceed and solve the recurrence relation using substitution method. So, first we will learn to write the recurrence relation of multiplications and then we will solve this recurrence relation using substitution method. So, let's start with the first topic, writing the recurrence relation of multiplications. What do we mean by writing the recurrence relation of multiplications? Here the number of operations is the multiplications. We are interested in knowing the number of multiplications of this algorithm. We want to know how many multiplications are needed in order to compute factorial of n and for this we want to write the recurrence relation. We know what is recurrence relation. This is the algorithm to compute fact of n or factorial of n. If n is equal to 1, then 1 will be returned from the function. Otherwise, n times fact of n minus 1 will be returned from this function. Now we are interested in writing the recurrence relation of the number of multiplications required to compute factorial of n. How do we write one? We know the meaning of the recurrence relation from our previous lectures. Recall that a recurrence relation is a mathematical expression which is used to describe the cost of the overall problem in terms of the cost of solving the smaller subproblems. Here, the cost is the number of multiplications. As we want to write the recurrence relation of multiplications, the cost must be the number of multiplications. So, let us suppose Mn represents the cost in terms of multiplications of fact of n. This means Mn represents the number of multiplications required to compute factorial of n. So, this is the cost of the overall problem we have. We want to know the number of multiplications required to compute factorial of n and we are representing the number of multiplications required to compute factorial of n by Mn. Now, we want to represent Mn in terms of the cost of solving the smaller subproblems. We know the cost is the number of multiplications. So, now let's represent Mn in terms of the number of multiplications required to compute these subproblems. This is the base case and this is the recursive case of this algorithm. These are the smaller subproblems. And now we want to know the number of multiplications required to compute these smaller subproblems. Let's see how many multiplications are needed to compute the base case. Here we have if n is 1, then return 1. In this case, we can observe that there are no multiplications involved. We are just checking a condition and then we are returning some value. So, there are 0 multiplications for the base case. And hence, we can say m of 1 is equal to 0. Why m of 1? We know if n is equal to 1, then we are inside fact of 1. Therefore, n is equal to 1. And hence, we can say that this is m of 1. Because m of 1 represents the number of multiplications required to compute fact of 1. There are no multiplications needed to compute fact of 1. Here we are simply returning 1 when we are within fact of 1. Therefore, m of 1 must be equal to 0. Now, what about the else block? In the else block, we have return n times fact of n minus 1. We know the number of multiplications required to compute fact of n is mn. Therefore, the number of multiplications required to compute fact of n minus 1 must be m of n minus 1. 
and here we are performing one multiplication. Hence, the overall cost will be m of n minus 1 plus 1. The cost is the number of multiplications. The number of multiplications required to compute this subproblem is m of n minus 1 plus 1. Now we know the number of multiplications required to solve these subproblems. Now we are ready to write the recurrence relation of multiplications. This is the recurrence relation. m of n is equal to m of n minus 1 plus 1. If n is greater than 1, we can observe if n is greater than 1, then only the else block will be executed and n times fact of n minus 1 will be returned from this function. So, if n is greater than 1, then the else block will be executed and we know the number of multiplications required to compute this subproblem is m of n minus 1 plus 1. That is what I have written here. Now, what happens if n is equal to 1? Then the base case will be executed. And the number of multiplications required here is 0. This is the reason I have written 0 here. So, mn is equal to 0 if n is equal to 1. So, this is the recurrence relation of multiplications of factorial of n. Now, as we have written the recurrence relation, let's move to the next topic where we will discuss how to solve the recurrence relation we have obtained using substitution method. Let's solve the recurrence relation we have obtained using substitution method. This is the recurrence relation we have obtained. m of n is equal to m of n minus 1 plus 1 if n is greater than 1. If n is equal to 1, then m of n will be equal to 0. Now, let's apply the substitution method to solve this recurrence relation. According to the substitution method, we need to write the recursive part first. So, let's write m of n equal to m of n minus 1 plus 1. This is the recursive part. And I have written this as it is. mn is equal to mn minus 1 plus 1. Now, let's substitute m of n minus 1 by m of n minus 2 plus 1. Because if we replace n by n minus 1, we will get n minus 2 here and we will get plus 1 here. So, m of n is equal to m of n minus 2 plus 1 plus 1. This plus 1 needs to be written as it is here. And m of n minus 1 is replaced by m of n minus 2 plus 1. We can rewrite this as m of n minus 2 plus 2. Now we can substitute m of n minus 2 by m of n minus 3 plus 1 because if we replace n by n minus 2 here, we will get n minus 3 here and plus 1. So we will get mn equal to m of n minus 3 plus 1 plus 2. Plus 2 is written as it is here. And m of n minus 2 is replaced by m of n minus 3 plus 1. This can be rewritten as m of n minus 3 plus 3 because 1 plus 2 is 3. Therefore, m of n is equal to m of n minus 3 plus 3. We can observe a pattern here. If we have 1 here, then we have 1 here as well. If we have 2 here, then we have 2 here as well. If we have 3 here, then we have 3 here as well. So, we can continue in this way up to m of n minus k. In this case, m of n is equal to m of n minus k plus k. If we have k here, then we must have k here as well according to this pattern. Now, we have written the generalized form. mn is equal to m n minus k plus k. Now, we know m of n represents the number of multiplications required to compute fact of n m of n minus 1 represents the number of multiplications required to compute fact of n minus 1. m of n minus 2 represents the number of multiplications required to compute fact of n minus 2. What about m of n minus k? It is clear that m of n minus k represents the number of multiplications required to compute fact of n minus k. 
let us suppose fact of n minus k is the last recursive call. Then n minus k must be equal to 1 in order to satisfy the base case. We know that if n is equal to 1, then the base case is satisfied. This is because I am assuming fact of n minus k is the last recursive call. In this case, we know the number of multiplications must be 0. As n is equal to 1, here we will get 1. This means we will get m of 1 and m of 1 is equal to 0. So, we are assuming n minus k is equal to 1. Therefore, we will get m of 1 here and this will be replaced by 0. So, now let's assume n minus k is equal to 1. Then k must be equal to n minus 1. Therefore, we can replace k by n minus 1. Here we will get n minus n minus 1, which is equal to 1. So, we will get m of 1 here. And this k will also be replaced by n minus 1. So, we will get m of 1 plus n minus 1. Now, what is m of 1? We know m of 1 is equal to 0. So, here we have 0 plus n minus 1. This is equal to n minus 1. So, m of n is equal to n minus 1. This means, in order to compute fact of n, a total of n minus 1 multiplications are needed. And we can represent this using asymptotic notation. m of n can be written as big O of n. So, precisely n minus 1 multiplications are needed in order to compute factorial of n. And m of n is asymptotically equal to big O of n. So, we have solved the recurrence relation of multiplications of factorial of n using substitution method. And you can verify this on your own as well that why there are n minus 1 multiplications. Let's say we want to calculate factorial of 5. What is factorial of 5? Factorial of 5 is 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. There are a total of 4 multiplications in case of factorial of 5. Similarly, 6 factorial is 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Here we have a total of 5 multiplications. So, in order to calculate 6 factorial, we need 5 multiplications. In order to calculate 5 factorial, we need 4 multiplications. It is clear that in order to calculate n factorial, we need n minus 1 multiplications. And that is what we are getting here. So, we have verified the result as well. And this means we have solved our recurrence relation correctly. So, with this, we are done with this topic also. We learned how to write the recurrence relation of multiplications of factorial of n and we also learned how to solve the recurrence relation of multiplications using substitution method. Now we are done with this lecture. Okay friends, this is it for now. Thank you for watching this presentation. I will see you in the next one.